Hello, and welcome to uh, the Filda House Library. We're here in the library today because I'm going to start what I hope to be a new regular series uh, for us to put out here from Filda House, and that's going to be called Three for One. Uh, and basically what we're going to try to do here is discuss a trilogy. We're going to take a trilogy of books, movies, uh, games, whatever it happens to be that time around. That's going to be your three, and you're going to get them all in one episode. That's the one. And actually, we're going to apply three questions to them. So you got another three there. And that three is going to be, uh, three questions are going to be, which one's the best? And kind of by extension, which one's the weakest? Um, which one adds the most to the series? Which one, you know, really fleshes it out, really brings everything home, etc.? And then finally, uh, does that best book of the series, does it need to be in the trilogy? Or could it perhaps survive as a single work? Uh, if you took maybe a little bits of the other two, stuck them together, and just turned it into one. Or, you know, maybe even just ignored the other ones. Could you, could you do that? So those are the questions that we're going to be looking to apply, as well as talking about the series as a whole. Now, of course, when we do this, we have nearly an infinite amount of choices to go for. People do things in threes, because three is one of the bonding numbers of the universe, or a magic number, at any rate. Uh, and, uh, you know, we could talk about The Lord of the Rings, we could talk about The Matrix Trilogy, we could talk about countless video games that come in threes. Uh, but I kind of decided for this first time to do one that's maybe a little bit outside of what most people have experience with, um, but still in somewhat of familiar territory. So we are actually going to be going for the Lewis Space Trilogy, and that is Out of the Silent Planet, Paralandra, and That Hideous Strength. So, the series as a whole, a little bit of some background on it for you. This is definitely a older style uh, science fiction. Um, so, that's definitely a subgenre of a subgenre. You have science fiction, and then you have the older versions of science fiction, men like Jules Verne or these uh, Lewis novels, which are some of the first novels he brought out. They are very old, um, as far as that goes. A and that's not for everyone. Uh, some people don't like the fact that, like, for instance, in Jules Verne's novels, there's going to be some scientific inconsistencies and incongruities that just, they didn't have as so much information about back then. He can write a book about journey to the center of the earth, then we know, hey, you're not going to make it to the center of the earth, or if you do make it there, you're going to die. Um, Lewis in his space trilogy uh, will, when he's talking about the space between the planets, um, as you leave the atmosphere, the spaceship hits this kind of ether that's a fluid, almost like the um, the planets are suspended in a in a liquid, and that was at the time he wrote it actually a um, an accepted theory amongst many of what the universe was like outside of our atmosphere because no one had been up there and nobody knew any differently. Um, that, that doesn't bother me as much. I think that's interesting to look back and see what some of the thoughts were um, from those eras. Also, as with Jules Verne, again in this as well, you see a lot of really interesting predictive before its time descriptions of some technologies which would uh, really come uh, into play later and be interesting. I mean, like Jules Verne's submarine, of course, being iconic, or uh, in the Space Trilogy, this concept that they build their spaceships in this sphere shape in order to simulate gravity. And they have a strong, like a heavy, dense core, which, you know, ended up under, you know, gravitational theory is kind of some interesting playing around with it and trying to make it all work, as opposed to a lot of science fiction, which just kind of expect you to assume that gravity can somehow be simulated. Um, they actually try to create it. <clears throat> In any event, 
So you have to get through some of that with older science fiction, and I realize not everyone can do that. I think the rewards of being able to do so far outweigh uh, a little bit of clunky science every now and then. Now, this series in particular, uh, Lewis, back in the day, was talking with his good friend Tolkien. They were bemoaning the lack of quality modern literature in certain genres written by Christian, you know, to be written by Christians. Uh, Lewis was talking about science fiction. It was new. It was cutting edge. Uh, he was excited. He liked it. Um, Tolkien was talking about you know his pet thing, which was uh, lore and myths and mythology. And they were both saying, we need Christians who will write this kind of thing. Well, Lewis offered up the challenge. He said, hey, we're academics, you know what? But it's time for us to put our money where our mouth is, and I'm going to write a science fiction novel. And you should write a fantasy novel. Of course, Tolkien, from this challenge, would eventually publish The Hobbit, which would lead to the publishing of The Lord of the Rings and the development of that uh, universe. <clears throat> Lewis wrote Out of the Silent Planet, which would eventually lead to his space trilogy. Now, a little bit of controversy about... Controversy almost isn't the right word, but about this trilogy... It almost actually isn't a trilogy, because we have three books from Lewis uh, in the Space Trilogy. There are also, it's either two or three more books in the Lewis Space Not Trilogy. Um, but it's pretty much clearly recognized at this point that Lewis didn't write those. As a matter, as a matter of fact, it was pretty much always accepted that he didn't write them. Uh, but somebody had basically turned into the publisher of these books that had C.S. Lewis and were in the same series. But... The writing style is not the same. Uh, the tone of the books is completely different. And it is pretty much universally accepted that these Lewis's science fiction are these three novels that I have right here. So, that leads us to a discussion of uh, the series as a whole, the three books, which, as I said, is an older version of science fiction. Um, and it really leads itself to an interesting cosmetology uh, that exists in it, where basically, <clears throat> and you'll see similarities with some of Tolkien's cosmetology, because basically Lewis purported that each planet kind of has a, a guardian spirit, or more, more a guiding spirit. Uh, similar in this hierarchy of creatures, kind of to Tolkien's, if you read more of Tolkien's expanded universe, had a similar kind of effect. Uh, Dr. Ransom is our main character uh, for the series, and it's really chronicling his adventures as he goes out and visits the various planets of the solar system, um, all, all six of them. <laughs> That's all they had back then. Uh, which, again, one of those scientific things that uh, has changed since then. But hey, that changes a lot anyway. I have a book that I wrote when I was in high school that alludes to nine planets in the solar system, and that's already debunked. So, uh, at any rate. Uh, and just, he as, as he goes out and explores and interacts with these various planets and on Earth, um, the science and philosophy that come into play there. So, in the first book... Out of the Silent Planet, you kind of have a lot of that established, and uh, like I said, we meet our main characters, and we get some of the cosmetology that's developed in the second book, and then you have the third book, That Hideous Strength, which is kind of the capstone of the series. Alrighty, so let's apply our three questions that we are looking to answer in this series to these books. First, what is the strongest, and by extension, what's kind of the weakest book? Of the series. Now, you're going to get some difference in opinions here, but I'll throw you mine. I would say the best book in the series is That Hideous Strength. That's the third book in the series. I think it's the strongest of the books. I think it takes the most time to really explain itself, to try and get you to understand why the characters do certain things, uh, to understand, you know, to really feel and sympathize for them to get concerned and scared when they're in bad situations, to be excited when good things happen to them. I think it takes the most time to do that. You also see a lot of Lewis's humor in this book, uh, in particular that, that dry sort of British wit 
really comes out in this book. And if, if you like that kind of thing and you haven't read this book, uh, you need to remedy that because that it's basically some of a British wit at its best. So I would definitely say that that's the strongest book of the series. Now, I said uh, you're going to get some difference of opinions because many people will tell you that Paralandra, the second book, is not only the best of the space trilogy, but one of the best novels, if not the best novel, that Lewis ever wrote. And I can see why they say that. Uh, it is in its descriptions, in its layout, it's, it's a beautiful work. Um, and if you particularly like Lewis's writing style and his, um, the imagination that he can bring to a world and the descriptions that he can bring to a world, then this is definitely a book, again, that you'll want to look at and read because it is just full of that. Now, by inference, what you probably all picked up is that the weakest book is kind of universally believed to be Out of the Silent Planet, which is the first book in the series. And the reason why I think that it is viewed to be the weakest, A, it's the shortest. Um, I think it, it does have some pacing issues in that sense. Uh, it is true that the third book, uh, That Hideous Strength, does tend to drag a little bit. Um, and, you know, it's twice as long as Paralander, and Paralander is twice as long as Out of the Silent Planet. But this Out of the Silent Planet, the reason why I'd say it's the weakest, is it, it gives you a lot of really good bare bones for the series. Uh, it sets up that cosmetology. It sets up the characters. It sets up the various uh, themes that you're going to see. But it doesn't really go into them on any depth level. Um, it is where we find out, as I was saying earlier, that you have these guardian spirits of the very, or guiding spirits of the various planets, and the one of Earth, where Ransom and of course the other humans are from, is Satan, it turns out, Lucifer, who fell, and so therefore he's not in communication, and he's not in, uh, you know, contact with the guardian spirits of the other planet. So that's why Earth is the silent planet, and that's why people from Earth are out of the silent planet right there <clears throat> so I mean, it sets a lot of that up but even most of that is more fully delved into in the uh, in the second book so quick nutshell I say that hideous strength is the best book of the series in as much as I think it's the best written as far as characters and it's the it's the most engaging of the stories. Uh, and I would say Out of the Silent Planet is the weakest because it doesn't do much of that. Well, which is the best for the series as a whole? Well, it's got to be out of uh, that hideous strength, right? I mean, that's the best book. But I would actually disagree. I think Paralandra is actually the best book for the series as a whole in as much as it really takes those themes that are in out of the silent planet that aren't as developed and just expounds them, makes them stronger. You see more of how things work and why things work the way they did in the series. And like I said, and it's, it's very well written, it's very beautiful and it definitely shows the creativity that was put into the universe. Um, so I would say that Paralandra is in fact the best for the series. Which is actually going to lead me into my third question, which is the best book, in my estimation, uh, That Hideous Strength, it, does this benefit from being in a trilogy? Actually, the answer is no. I, I don't think it does. Uh, if you just read That Hideous Strength, there would be some questions you would have that were in the previous books, but ultimately, you wouldn't miss that much. You could have two paragraphs of somebody explaining in the beginning, by the way, blah, 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 blah. You would lose nothing from the book. Really, in a very real sense, I would say that the Space Trilogy is almost a space duo. Books one and two uh, are really connected. Book three is set in the same universe, but not really part of the same story on one level. Uh, Dr. Ransom is the only one he's not the main character of. Uh, you could debate that, I guess, but I would say he's not the main character. He does, definitely doesn't get much screen time. Um, it's the only book where all the main characters are not in the other books. 
uh, in Paralandra and That Hideous Strength, or excuse me, Out of the Silent Planet, in those two books, the characters are all the same characters. Um, it's the only book that takes place primarily on Earth, as opposed to the other two, which only have a, the briefest of moments on Earth. So it's definitely different than the other two, and it can definitely easily be separate from the other two. For instance, though, it said that Paralandra was actually the best book. No, you can't separate Paralandra from this series. It, it's part of the series, and it wouldn't make sense outside of it. Um, but for that hideous strength, I would say you could definitely read it by itself, and, and you wouldn't be lost. So those are the three questions uh, that we're seeking to ask. So we said overall, the series is pretty good. If you haven't read it, I would highly suggest it. That Hideous Strength is my personal favorite book in the series. And um, if you wanted to read it by itself, you could, if you just want a taste of what the Space Trilogy is like. And that might inspire you to read the other two books. Um, the uh, Space Trilogy as a whole, as I was saying, is definitely worth your time to read. Uh, particularly if you're interested in older science fiction or understanding how older science fiction really works. Um, they're all very well written. And it, they're not like the Chronicles of Narnia in as much as they aren't nearly as Christological. Uh, if... If that puts you off, if you're, for example, a non-Christian and you felt like the Chronicles of Narnia were preachy or something, A, you're wrong. You just don't like good literature. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, if you did feel that, uh, don't let that put you off to Lewis as a whole. That is actually not necessarily, um, and a message that overt is not necessarily common in his literature. And this would be a good example of that. These are definitely Christian books. They are definitely written from a man who is a Christian. But, like I said, the, the nuances of it is much more similar to Tolkien's writings, where, I mean, it's, it's obviously taking uh, creative liberty with his Christian cosmetology. Lewis might tell you it isn't. I don't know. I, he's not here to speak for himself. Um... But, so that's what I would highly suggest reading the three books. Uh, like I said, you could get away with reading that hideous strength if that's all you wanted to read. And actually, it's a very poignant book for today's uh, audience, particularly with discussions of bioethics and discussions of how technology affects humans. I mean, there are transhumans in the book. Yeah. And it was written 120 years ago. So, uh... You know, t like I said, that's one of the great things about old science fiction is seeing where, where it goes with certain things. Um, anyway, that is my first three for one. And we will look to see you at the next one. And I would actually like to hear what you guys, what trilogy you guys might like to see. Uh, so if you can throw that in the comments. That would be great. And we'll see uh, which one we end up going with.